Victory Monday. Now, that is what I like to hear. I do not want to hear about Massacre Monday and or the Monday after the massacre and all that stuff. So I am so glad that we can talk about a win on Monday morning. Uh, and by the time you get this video, it may be Monday afternoon, but I digress. Anyway, so the Washington football team came back to beat the Atlanta Falcons yesterday, 34 to 30. Uh, very happy with the win, obviously. Very happy with uh, Taylor Haneke. The dude just continues the ball out. I mean, that that's one thing about Taylor Haneke. He's going to try to win the ball game for you. Now, he may throw some picks, but you know what? You know who else did that in his career and is probably considered a Hall of Famer? Brett Favre. So, he reminds me a lot of Brett Favre. Uh, he really does. I mean, besides wearing the number... You know, Taylor Heineke is a baller, you know, throwing that that prayer of a pass downfield in the end zone, and guess who was at the receiving end? Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin had a big day yesterday. Two touchdowns. I mean, he just balled out. You know that if you're going to win a football game, you have to get Terry McLaurin involved and Washington did not disappoint. Taylor uh, Heineke did not disappoint. Terry McLaurin got heavily involved. Now, here's the issue though yesterday. We lost Logan Thomas. Thomas is probably going to be out with that hamstring. So we're going to really have to have the other tight ends to, to step it up, next man up. Um, Seals Jones is going to have to be the number one guy. Um, we're going to have to probably promote Samus Reyes to the active squad and try to get him involved in the game. And certainly, um, oh man, oh, my mind is not good on a Monday morning without coffee. Um, Bates, John Bates, uh, He's going to have to step it up as well because we can't go with just one tight end. So it's going to be interesting to see how long Thomas is going to be out for and who's going to be able to step up and make plays at the tight end position. Always seems like we wind up being thin at that that position for some reason. Now, uh, another area of concern looked like that Antonio Gibson was quite gimpy. Uh, toward the end of the game there, and, you know, he, he played like he was a little beat up, but he also played pretty well. I mean, you know, Gibson has really turned into a fantastic running back. We need him. If we're going to win football games, Gibson along with Terry McLaurin, those two guys we're going to need, and we're going to need healthy. So there is a concern with Gibson. Um, you know, is he going to be healthy for... Uh, the game against the Saints, because he, he went off the field kind of limping a little bit. I know that uh, there was some doubt about him playing because of his shin, so he may have re-aggravated that injury. Uh, we'll find out from Ron Rivera today, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, Dustin Hopkins, dude, you missed two extra points in a row. Two extra points in a row. You can't, you know, I understand that extra points nowadays are not necessarily a gimme, but you missed two in a row. You've been shaky. Now, I, I have been a D-Hop apologetic. You know, I've been saying, look, it's not all his fault. It's been, you know, a new long snapper, all the mechanics. They just got to learn the timing, and when they get the timing down, Hopkins will be okay, but... I don't know what went wrong with those two extra point attempts. I'm sure when the coaches look at the the uh, the game uh, the game film that they will be able to see. Okay, was it D Hop just you know kicking the ball to the right? And if you noticed every single field goal that Hopkins has kicked, 
has been favoring to the right, every single one of them. So, of course, if he's going to miss, it's going to be to the right. So, I don't know, again, if that's mechanics of the snapper and the holder. I mean, Tressway has been holding the form for quite a while. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think it's anything that has to do with uh, Tressway holding the ball. I, I just, I really think that it comes down to Dustin Hopkins is just missing these field goals. And this is not going to be good for Washington if we can't rely on Dustin Hopkins. And speaking of that, I'm laughing because, uh, you know, as a little meme that I saw on Twitter, you know, that pass from Taylor Haneke to J.D. McKissick, where McKissick, he's running down the, the sideline there, and he's like, I will not be denied. And he just takes off, and he fly. I mean, he is airborne, it looked like, for 15 seconds. I mean... The dude is like, I will not be denied. I don't trust Dustin Hopkins, <laughs> even at this short of a distance. We're getting six points. And sure enough, you know, I, I didn't know if that was a touchdown or not. I really thought, nah, he's, he's out to like the goal line. You know, we'll punch it in on the next play. It'll all be good. They gave it to him. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know. The, the the meme was the point when you realize that you have Dustin Hopkins as your field goal kicker. And he's like, nope, screw that. I'm going for the end zone. I'm going for six. So that was an excellent play by J.D. McKissick. That's one of those plays that you feel like might have saved your season. Because, I mean, had Washington not won this football game, they would have been one in three. And then you're facing the Saints, you're facing the Packers, Broncos, uh, Tampa Bay at some point. I mean, really, it's a brutal schedule. And this is one of those games where if they lost, I mean, you're looking at basically, you're one in three. You're not going to win all of those football games. You may not win any of those football games. And you may come out of like a four game stretch at like one and seven. <clears throat> You're pretty much out of the playoffs at that point. I mean, no one comes back from one and seven. So I really think that JD McKissick saved our season on that effort. So my hats go out to JD McKissick, man. You really, you really saved this. Final thing, the defense continues to struggle. They did get a little bit more, a little bit more pressure on the quarterback, Matt Ryan. Um, and I will say that personal foul call on Chase Young was junk. Come on, I understand the, you can't hit the quarterback high. I understand that. But I think that there needs to be some sort of well, th there needs to be intent involved <clears throat> because players are getting called on stuff where you 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 realize it was there was no intent, there was no maliciousness involved when they try to hit a quarterback high or low. You know, it's like it's one of those things where they're kind of like leaping through the air and they just happen to to hit the player at the wrong spot and they get called but it was not their intent to do anything illegal. I think that there needs to be intent involved in the decision of the refs when they throw the flag. Now, yes, that may cause some sort of, um, um, you know, inconsistencies with how the calls are being made, but I think it was a bad call. I think it was a horrible call. I think the refs, had a lot of very close calls. Now, they may have been the right calls. They were very ticky-tacky on some of, some of these things. I think right there that shows you that the NFL needs to readdress their, uh, their thing with protecting the quarterback because at some point it's a little too ridiculous. It was way ridiculous on that. That should have been... Uh, well, 
Honestly, that should have been Matt Ryan being down when he hit his knee to the turf. Should have been turnover on downs at that point. Instead, it led to points. So, can't have that. Can't have the refs continuing to decide whether if a team wins or loses. And we've seen that way too much in the NFL. We've seen that way too much with the games that the Washington football team plays, right? But yeah, the defense continues to struggle. Secondary is all out of place. They continue to make big mistakes that lead to big, huge plays for the opponents. That has got to stop. I mean, it's got to stop. Um, the, the, the defensive line, they still can't get pressure to the quarterback. They got a little pressure yesterday, so it's like you're showing up a little bit of a sign, but they are nowhere near they need to be. Nowhere near. Uh, the the running game, uh, well, the, the run, run defense, the run defense has been horrible. They allow like huge chunks of running yards can't have that. So there is a lot to be fixed. I am happy though. I am happy we won. Thank goodness we won because that gives us something positive to go into the Saints game. The Saints didn't look that great yesterday. You know, they 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 got beat by the Giants. So you know, the Saints might be starting to come back down to the earth a little bit. Now that, of course, Drew Brees is not there anymore to kind of put the team on his shoulders, I, you know, I think the Saints, the Saints are a very beatable team, but nobody's going to be beatable by us unless we fix our issues with defense. That is all I got to say about this. This was a longer video than expected, but it's longer because I'm happy we won. Folks. Please, please continue to support me. Watch these videos, subscribe, like, comment, share. I will see you in the next one.